I, I thought I would begin by uh, talking about a, a few issues as we approach the end of the semester. And then um, I thought we would go in and do a review of your uh, exam. Hopefully, um, Larissa has passed them out. Have you passed them out to the students in the class? Yes. Good. So we will be going over the exams here in a few minutes, but in preparation for the end of the semester, I thought we would and then just kind of talk about the schedule. Um, today we're supposed to be covering CFD. That is actually going to be shifted to a uh, lecture on Thursday. Uh, Eric is going to uh, meet with you in class. I'll still be uh, on this trip. And so he's going to uh, meet with you in class and discuss a little bit about uh, computational fluid dynamics. Um, and then on Tuesday of next week, so a week from today, uh, we'll be talking briefly about rapid prototyping and how uh, those that that are interested in um, sending a file to either the BYU wraps the prototyping systems or for the remote students, I think most of the universities that um, are part of this class, I think most of them have a rapid prototyping systems that the remote students could uh, get access to. And so we'll talk about that um, a week from today. We'll also spend part of the period uh, actually doing a review for uh, the written uh, exam, which will be uh, a week from this coming Thursday. Uh, that exam will, will be given just uh, in class. It will be a 50-minute exam. Uh, it will be similar to the written exam uh, on the mid that we had for the midterm. The final presentation is scheduled for uh, December 16th from uh, 2.30 to 5.30 Mountain Time. And uh, in preparation uh, for that, we're going to talk a little bit uh, today about uh, how to kind of get things pulled together and ready for that final presentation. Dr. Jensen? Um, yeah. Is that final presentation the 16th or the 12th? It's actually Friday the 16th. Okay. So this is the week of, and so it says December 12th, okay. which is, I think, Monday, and the 16th should be Friday. Okay. I think we can verify that by looking at calendar and so in December yeah so it's Friday the 16th is when we have the final presentation so, uh, so just a little bit of, uh, of a uh, discussion about the CFD coming up on Thursday if you go to your um, if you go to your schedule that was handed out at the beginning of the class, you'll notice that there is this um, fundamentals of uh, CFD, and it has this footnote too. This footnote is actually a, a, a link, a website that you can go to. When you go to that website, uh, it should pull up uh, this document. It, uh, 275 pages, and I don't expect you to kind of have that 275 pages read by third day. That would be uh, ridiculous. What I would ask that you consider doing before Thursday is actually going over and reading just the introduction. So the introduction of this uh, PDF book, it has uh, 
a uh, page on motivation. It has a few pages on background, and then kind of it does an overview on a page. It gives some uh, notation, but um, really what I'm hoping that you would do is just kind of um, look at these first three or four pages of this because it, it has a good discussion. Um, he provides uh, good motivation. It gives some background on kind of the equations and the mathematics. If you want to take a, a deep dive into uh, the mathematics, then uh, you can continue reading this because it goes over all of the different approaches, the finite difference approach. It goes over um, a semi-discrete uh, approach. It goes over finite volume. It really has a, a very good uh, coverage of mathematics that's used in PFD. And so instead of going out and buying a $200 uh, textbook, uh, this is a, a really good reference material. Uh, Eric will also be available to you if the appendix uh, a out of the Munson book, which is kind of the typical book used for the uh, introductory to uh, fluid dynamics, um, that appendix A uh, covers kind of the approach to gridding, uh, doing a boundary layer, and then doing a general uh, gridding approach to uh, to a CFD problem, and so it again kind of covers the uh, approach that you would want to uh, to use on the CAD system. Um, so back to uh, the schedule for for just a minute. Um, if um, so, that will be on Thursday. Uh, then on Tuesday, I'll be back and I'll uh, handle the rapid prototyping discussion and also the review for the for the uh, final exam. Uh, what I would like to do now is talk uh, for just a few minutes about the preparation for the final presentation. If you remember back to um, if you remember back to the beginning of the semester, we passed out a document that was the final project description and requirements. And in that uh, packet, if you will kind of uh, refer to that uh, after class today and look at it, you'll notice that this uh, document goes through a pretty careful discussion about how uh, we are going to weight different parts of this uh, project it specifies kind of the point type total. It gives the uh, breakdown as to kind of what's expected in each of these categories. Uh, but more importantly, as you get to the bottom of this document, it begins to uh, talk about what you need to submit. So it talks about a CD that needs to contain the work that was done for this project. It talks about how to put on that uh, DVD or DVD. Some of you may uh, need to put this on a DVD because it won't fit on a, on, a, on a CD. So it talks about preparing a readme file and what needs to be put into the readme file. It talks about uh, basically how the project folders on the DVD need to be organized, and so that's all kind of given in this portion of the document. And then uh, another thing that I would kind of refer you to so that you can make sure that you don't lose points or kind of missing anything on your on the grading. It talks about the presentation and it talks about how the presentation is going to be graded. We're basically looking for uh, a discussion given in the presentation that kind of 
hits all of these different um, uh, parts of the class, the topology, the parametrics, the mass properties, and so forth. Um, and then the very last thing it talks about, you need to have kind of a logical flow. You need to have appropriate use of visual, visual aids, uh, appropriate grammar, and you need to be able to understand and, an and answer questions. Um, that will be asked by the audience during that presentation. In the document, it says that we're going to have 18 minutes. Uh, it's probably going to be more like uh, 13, 12 or 13 minutes for your presentation, and then a couple of minutes for question and answer. Uh, this 18 was before I, before I knew exactly how many uh, teams we were going to have. And so um, I think each team ought to prepare a 12 minute, 12 to 13 minute presentation that is high quality, that has a kind of story that, that your team is telling about your uh, efforts on this project. And then um, the evaluation of the presentation is going to be based on a 50% weight that comes from your classmates, your peers, and then a 50% weight that's going to come from Dr. Jensen, from the faculty mentors, and from the TA. We will pass out, um, we'll probably make it available next week that there will be an evaluation sheet, something like this, where each column represents a different team that's presenting, and every student will basically score their, uh, they'll evaluate the presentation that's given, and so we will collect up all of the votes, and all of the scores done by the, uh, the student and done by the faculty, We'll weight those uh, scores and that will help determine your presentation grade. Uh, you'll also, uh, each of you will evaluate your team members. And so if all of your team members have carried an equal share of the load and there's, um, there's six people on your team, then you can say everybody carried one sixth of the uh, project, and everybody should uh, earn a, an A or an A minus or something like that. If you have a team member or team members that have not carried an equal share, then that needs to be kind of evaluated by each team member and reported and turned in so that we give credit where credit is due. If uh, someone has, has truly been missing in action and has not carried their share of the project, they don't, they do not deserve an equal grade to the other team members. And so we want uh, the teams to kind of evaluate uh, themselves and their team members and we'll take that into account on the on the project grade. <clears throat> um, one other thing that I would mention, <clears throat> we will have a number of um, of industrial guests that will be uh, attending the presentation. We have got uh, commitments from the Siemens folks. We've got commitments from the Altair folks. I'm still waiting to hear from uh, Deso, the Katia folks, to see if they're going to be uh, participating in uh, in the presentation um, day and event. Uh, we do have uh, General Motors participating. Uh, they are going to be providing a number of awards uh, to the winning. Um, presentation to the second 